question. It's a situation room on Spice FM, on KTN, on YouTube, on Facebook, on X, on TikTok. We appreciate all audiences from wherever, whether you're listening to us on radio, watching us on TV, or you're following our conversations on TikTok. And our numbers on TikTok are growing. Our numbers on X have also been growing. Our numbers on Facebook have been growing. Our numbers on YouTube have been growing. That means we are reaching more and more and more people from Nairobi to the world. There are people who are watching this this evening on Wednesday because where they are, it's already going to Thursday. Mm. There are people who are watching this this evening on Tuesday because where they are, it's Tuesday night. And there are those who are listening to us and watching this morning because they are in somewhere in East Africa. Yeah. And it's morning. Okay. Somebody was uh, on YouTube saying they, has, they have been catching the conversations later after the show. But today they decided, ah, ah, Leo, Mimi, Nayo, Nayo, Asubui, yeah. live, live. Can you see them? I'm trying to look for them because who's I did it, start it, earlier. Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Who is it? Who is it? Yeah, to find out who that was, because I saw it earlier and it was very clear Scroll that they catch down. up with the show later. Yeah. But today they said, no, I need to then clock in right now this morning at least to be Go um, on. Go uh, on. with all of you. Go on. Go on. Down, 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 down. We'll see them. We'll find it. Yeah. We'll find it. As you're looking for it, let me talk about Safaricom mm -hmm. and the all-in-one package. The Safaricom... You keep looking for it. Don't stop. Okay, the Safaricom all-in-one <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. all package is this new brilliant mm. thinking by Safaricom. Bas, I found him. You, you found him? Mm -hmm. Ah, let me finish. So, Safaricom observed and they saw people are buying airtime. And at the moment, there are many people, when they're buying airtime, the other airtime is just about to finish or they're in the middle of a call and the call... Uh, katikas because airtime or they're in the middle of browsing and airtime or they're in the middle of sending an sms and airtime or they're in the middle of accessing some service via ussd and airtime so they were not able to do that and then now they're going to look for money to buy airtime cumulatively this person will actually spend so much amount of money mm -hmm. because they've bought separate amount for uh, calling and sms a separate amount for data and Safaricom said, how about we just make it easier? Let's come up with an all-in-one package. Put together, call minutes, SMS, data, all there. And then, in fact, we say, WhatsApp, free. Mm -hmm. And that's an all-in-one package. Yeah. Yeah. How do you access it? Dial star 544 hash. It'll bring in a suite of options. Go to option number four, the one that says go monthly. Once you choose the go monthly, it'll bring another page of options. Choose the one that says all-in-one. And then it brings a number of options look at the option that favors you it'll be tell you for x amount of money you get this amount of data this number of minutes for call time this number of sms's uh, x amount so you look at it and see how much data do i consume in, in 30 days how many minutes do i on average uh, talk on the phone for in 30 days and then choose the one that works for you brilliant thing and to top it all up just because you choose the all-in-one WhatsApp free. Yes. 30 days, peace of mind. When you talk about mental health, these are some of those things that just, you irritate, don't you, you don't realize it. You don't realize how irritating it yeah, is for you. Yeah. But it's actually something you can take care of. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So let's say a special shout out to Peter Mutahi this morning. Mm -hmm. And he says, Leo, ni meseme, Leo hata mimi, ni seme good morning. Mm -hmm. I feel terrible if I rewatch you during the day. Leo, I'm in from the start. Very good. And that's good. It's always glad to have folks like you coming in every morning and just, you know, you know, being part of what we do here every day. Yes. And to say, look, I don't want to catch up on the clips. I'm going to plug in at this time and now start to form the conversations that set the agenda for how we should be thinking operating oh, yes. in the country, in the region, and in the world. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, Peter Karibu. Our guest for the next hour is going to be a senator. Senator Tabitha Mutinda is a nominated senator. She's the vice chair of the Finance and Budget Committee of Senate. These are the ones that basically look at how much money is going to the counties mm. and how much money is going per county. And they also look back at how much the counties are, um, are uh, how the counties are spending their money. Sawa, sawa. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about this issue, which is right here on page four 
of the standard this morning governors are pushing for a total shutdown of counties to force the national treasury to release funds to counties as a biting cash crunch threatens to bring vital operations to a halt as we, the wait continues county workers claim they are barely surviving while others are contemplating quitting the workforce as they grapple with huge debts. Council of Governors, Finance, Planning and Economy Committee Chair Fernandez Barasa says the National Treasury owes counties 104 billion shillings for three months. Barasa said governors are unable to perform their duties effectively and implement their development projects, adding that critical services in the counties are at a standstill. Governors had their agendas and development projects to implement. It's becoming difficult due to erratic disbursement of funds which has made many counties accrue pending bills. Yesterday, Transoia's George Natambea said that the only solution to the financial wars is a total shutdown of counties. Natambea asked the Council of Governors to shut down the devolved, devolved units, claiming major activities in counties have been paralyzed thanks to the delay in the release of shareable revenue by the National Treasury. Mm. This is not a new story. It is like, you know, when you wake up in the morning, the sun will rise from the east. You wake up in the morning, it'll be chilly and cold in the morning. Yep. You wake up in the morning, you'll find the morning dew. You wake up, you know, you have to, you wake up in the morning, you, ha I wake up in the morning, I wash my face, I, I brush, brush my teeth, teeth, I comb my hair, <laughs> I wear <laughs> my clothes, <laughs> I polish <laughs> my <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. National Treasury does not send money to counties. It's a morning, it's an everyday thing. It's like we're used to this thing. <laughs> What's happening in this country of ours? My dear. We will come to the other side of uh, Fernandez Barraza, who's the chair who was speaking about shutting down counties, was in the headlines yesterday as leading in amount of money spent by his county for hospitality, you know? And uh, uh, the c control of budget saying, look, hospitality, travel, and all, it's just extravagance. We'll come to that, what they do with the money, all right? But there's an agreement mm. in the constitution that we, Kenyan people, pay tax to the government. That's an agreement we have made with our, with our people. And we also say that the amount of money collected shall be shared two ways. Mm. National government, and county government. Yeah. And there are laws in place that say this is how much money is going to. If the national government is brushing its teeth, combing its hair, polishing why is it, its shoes, polishing its shoes, why can't it send money to the counties on time? Mm -hmm. Is there any justification why not a single shilling that, for example, has been sent for the last three months? Cash crunch? Look, I'm sorry, but uh, please, eh? mm. see, you like me. Are I you? do. Okay. And mm. you want me to be happy? Yes, I you do. You don't like it when I'm angry? No, I don't like it. You just I'm want angry. me to be at peace? I, I, yes. Okay. I prefer it when you're peaceful. Thank you. Mm. Don't, if you do like that situation, don't tell me that there's a cash crunch when people are drinking 24 billion. Mm. Don't. Or people are eating 24 billion or traveling with 400 and something million per county. Mm. Don't, 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 don't. Don't tell me mm. that there's no money in the treasury. Don't tell me. Mm. Tell me something else mm. that somebody planted maize and it grew and they harvested. Tell me those things. Don't tell me that the reason why you have not sent money to the counties to fulfill crucial function is because there's a cash crunch. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because you spent emergency money the other day of how much? Four billion. Don't tell me. So, so, you know what it means is that um, what it means is functions of the national government, many of them are running, particularly recurrent expenditure. Okay? The government at the national level is able to pay its workers. The national government is able to buy its mandasi and guashe mm. for its offices. The national government is able to fuel its vehicles for its uh, staff and senior officials. Mm. The national government is able to do all these other things. The county governments are struggling to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. County governments are struggling to pay workers. Mm -hmm. County governments, uh, Kina Fernandez Barasa and the other governors are struggling to eat mandasi. <laughs> and, and travel. And doma. <laughs> and come to Nairobi. For example, there was a COG meeting yesterday when they were speaking. Do you know how much they struggle to come to Nairobi? Because there's no money. 
But if the national government is able to do it, the money should also go to the county. Let's now start fighting. How are you spending the money in the counties? That's a different conversation. And it's a justifiable and a constant conversation that we must have. Mm. But the same way we have that conversation for counties, we should also have the same conversation At for the government. National level. At Absolutely. national government, what are you doing with our money? Are you buying flowers and mandas and doma and guashe? What? What? That's the conversation that we're having. Yes. That's why I said, please don't, don't make me angry, please. <laughs> Our guest is here. <laughs> Senator Tabitha Mutinda is the vice chair of the Finance and Budget Committee of the Senate. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. How are you? Oh, hold on. You're on the wrong mic. There you go. Ah, no. Wait. <laughs> okay. Good? Yes. All right. Say good morning again. Good morning. How are you? Good, good, good. Karibu sana to Kenya's biggest conversation. Asante. Good to have you back here. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're a couple of minutes late. Uh, apologize to Kenyans. Uh, apologize. My sincere apologies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Sana. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yep. We will accept it. <laughs> uh, let me give you the proverb and then we get into our conversation. All this right. week, the proverbs are from Senegal. City says hi. He sent his greetings remotely. Oh. He's uh, enjoying some quiet time, chill time. He's recharging his batteries. He's on holiday. Awesome. It's mm. healthy. Yes. It's great. Yes. Yes. Amesama sana. And we give you the proverb from Senegal. Today's yes. proverb says, mm -hmm. to spend the night in anger is better than to spend it in repentance. Mm. I know, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> To spend the night in anger uh -huh. is better than to spend it in repentance. Oh. Oh. Um, Sorry, I just had a light bulb moment. But please, Anita, go ahead. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, I mean, it's two way scenario mm. in terms of, um, you know, you, you might be fasting and. Uh, choose to fast and uh, be in prayers. These are things that we do mm -hmm. um, each and every day. And uh, it can't be, days cannot be all the same. Mm -hmm. At times you have to make the tough decisions. And uh, each, it, it's the journey, it's the, it's the story that we shall tell during those difficult moments. And we have to go through these difficult moments. At times, what is important is the end result. Mm. And so, yes, you can uh, be, you know, repenting and you're fasting, you know, because you've decided to put some things aside. Mm. There are no results that, that come easy. You have to set some things aside and make the tough decisions. And in every tough decision, there must be a loss. The loss in this might be the anger part of it, but mm. at the end of the day, That'll be results. Really? Hmm. Okay. It's a perspective. Correct. It's a perspective. Like City always says, there's no right or wrong interpretation of a proverb. Eh? True. Proverb is given, and then there's a way in which you interpret. You interpret it. Yeah, in yes. a context, in different contexts of interpretation. That's why we love it when we hear different contexts. Correct. Me, I'm still floating on this proverb. I had a light bulb moment. Uh -huh. Light your bulb. <laughs> Because I, th I thought about a situation that I was in last week and I really wanted something to happen. Mm -hmm. And I actually went home angry because it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But then I realized that the people that I was supposed to be with later, at that, on that Friday when I really wanted it to happen, mm -hmm. got into a spot of trouble and there were things all mm -hmm. over the place. Mm -hmm. And if I had been in that position, mm -hmm. I would have been repenting, regretting mm -hmm. at night if I had been. So I went to bed angry, yeah. but I was in a better position because I didn't go. Ah, okay. So here you've taken repentance to regret. So it's better to sleep angry than, than to sleep regretful. Or to have to apologize or mm. be feeling bad if you didn't do it. Another context. <laughs> Correct. Good ones. Yes. Asan Sana. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies. I am still floating. <laughs> Floater. Okay, power. Senator. Yes. Your committee is a busy committee. 
Governors you saw them yesterday they're like no money three months mm. tunafunga hii kitu kila mtu aende nyumbani mm. okay mm. but this is not a new conversation we keep having this conversation every time yeah. Yeah. now this particular time mm. things have been a bit different first yeah. of all a uh, parliament had passed a finance bill had yeah. passed an appropriations bill yeah. had gone all those things mm. and then they had to retract they had to relook at the budget mm. and that meant that we have to relook at the division of revenue we have to look at how much then money goes to counties where are we at when it comes to the division of revenue and the county allocation of revenue um we are at the amendment stage mm -hmm. yes um during the genzi protest the bill the finance bill was not ascended to uh in that regard the president uh, wrote to the minister of finance and uh, directed him to do a proposal uh, on division of revenue uh, for budget cuts of course because now uh, things were the way they became yeah and uh, apparently that took place remember we had passed dora we had passed division of revenue and it was not easy even to pass it at 401 billion mm -hmm. uh, we had considered so many factors for us to settle at 401 our proposal as a committee at first was 415 billion to the counties mm. simply because we were coming from a point of we had passed policies case example is nssf contributions which had increased these yeah. are recurrent, recurrent expenditures to the employees mm. this cost needs to be catered for by the county governments mm. and the amounts for nssf uh, are as high as 3 billion We had the kites annually annually across yes, all the counties across all the 47 counties mm -hmm. we also have the kites project mm -hmm. that was a partnership between the national government and the county government a 50 50 share mm. and for kites the amount is 11.7 billion mm. we had our good people that is the chps in all the 47 counties cutting across mm. still the same 50 50 share mm. national government doing an input same case too the county government mm -hmm. and for the CHPs it was about uh, uh 4 billion mm -hmm. among others the annual salary increment mm -hmm. these are costs that the counties have to cater for and and their new costs and the new costs new that cost have been in this year yeah. in this year that uh, uh policies policies have been put in place and mm -hmm. they need to be adhered to mm -hmm. and looking at uh how things have been and looking at their own source revenue they 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 can't meet this so mm. hence we decided uh let us give them 415 uh something that we also passed mm -hmm. in the chambers and apparently of course we had to go to mediation we went to mediation and we settled at 401 mm. it was tough but at least and we closed that chapter apparently out of the occurrence of what happened the president could not assent the national uh, i mean the ministry of finance i say decided mm -hmm. and i use the word decided because we felt as a committee they did not satisfactorily explain to us the reason as to why they did a 20 billion cut mm. they didn't provide the simulation mm. they didn't explain the the facts which by which areas then do we cut do we send the chps home mm. do we stall the projects that had been started mm. will there be value for money do we not pay the nssf contributions so where is this budget cut what needs to be really reduced mm. uh putting in mind that uh the the, the, the counties end up incurring uh, additional costs like even commercial uh, uh interest costs from uh, the borrowings that they do from the banks due to delayed disbursements so uh, all the stakeholders that we had they were they were they all supported the 401 mm. On its treasury uh, stuck to the 380 and uh, from where we are we've we've totally refused that because then we will be killing and we will have wasted mm -hmm. uh, it's in, in in a layman in a simple uh, terminology is it's just starting a project putting the project is worth 100 million you put 60 million and then you say you want you want add the 40 million yeah. so where do we where do we live mm -hmm. Uh, uh 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 the people this project cannot assist them money has already been put it becomes a stall project this 
no value. Yep. Mm. It's wastage. And that's care. where now mm. we start having the notion and the, 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 the issues that are there. Like there's wastage in the counties. Why? Mm. Because people go and see stalled projects. And, and, and uh, these are the, some of the effects. Mm. So uh, as, as we speak, the bill is on uh, the amendment, of course, now it's on the, on the floor of the House. And I'm liking it because uh, all members are supporting that we should still retain the 401. Mm. What's, what's, what's our <coughs> take in terms of the, the revenue share and the national government share? The national government share, you look at it, is at 2.23 you know, trillion. And we are saying, why don't you just remove, why can't the ministry just remove the 20 billion from the national share? Mm and distribute it across all their M MTDS, the ministries, a little amount, like even two, 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 or something. And then they, they bear that. They cut yeah. cost from that and let the counties be. Mm. Because otherwise, we will look back and we will have lost a lot if we continue lowering what we are giving counties. You look at the financial year, 2014, 2015, uh, the percentage was close to... 21, almost 22%. Mm. Right now, as we speak, last financial year, it's about 16%. It's going lower it's dropping and lower. As and our why? budget rises, mm. yes. the money then that goes to the county is reduced. Corruption taking place. Can how, I ask how you? Do people, yeah. sorry, how do people uh, give contracts worth millions and then their salaries are delayed? How do they mm. survive? This is true. So can we look at a rationalization perspective that when this is being sat at to look there's budgets that have been done. Each county, because there's a whole process, there's a whole period of time mm -hmm. where each county is doing their budgets. They go through public participation. Mm -hmm. People come and contribute towards what they feel is important to be done. The counties then come together. Um, they have their CIDPs, right? They come out and say, this is what we are going to need. Correct. It is then further taken to another round table of course, where you sit mm -hmm. as the vice chair, mm -hmm. and everybody says, okay, this is what we've budgeted, this is how it has been rationalized, this is what we're going to put. And mm -hmm. it is agreed on mm -hmm. across board, yes. I would assume. Yes. That right until the person or the people who pay out the money, it is agreed that this is what we're actually going to do. Mm -hmm. Now, taking into consideration the rationalization process that happens, where is the bottleneck here? whereby then if you're saying 100 million should go to counties then at the end of the day we have 60 million and then somewhere at the end of the fiscal year we see that that money doesn't go through what happens what's is it just an exchequer problem or is there a direct and deliberate move to throttle money going to the counties which in my view then would lower the expectation of devolution what's the problem right there mm -hmm. There are two problems, actually. One from the national government, and that is more specific from the Ministry of Finance, where for the longest there has been uh, a huge you know, delay. Mm. And even as we speak currently, as at now, mm. there's delay uh, uh, by the ministry to disburse the funds and disburse them on time. Mm. Then this affects a lot in terms of the projects that are ongoing, delayed salaries uh, for the staff, and then, of course, delayed services to mm. the people. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, so that is that problem as far as the national government is concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, solution, uh, I'm happy we have the new minister, uh, John Bardi. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying I'm happy because one is an economist and uh, he's been just a recent member of National Assembly. He's a vast and uh, he's, he's uh, able to understand. He's been there in the house, you mm -hmm. know. And so... Uh, the last, uh, I think two weeks ago, uh, he appeared before my committee and we addressed the same issue of delays. I'm happy that he confirmed that before the end of this week, before the end of this month, is going to ensure he does a 32 billion transfer to the counties. And I'm happy still is appearing before Senate today, this mm. morning, mm. to answer to the finance questions. Apparently, the, the former minister was very good at appearing in our committee. We worked very well at mm. the committee level. But at the chamber level, he never appeared at uh, the chamber. So uh, the fact that uh, the current CS is looking forward to engage with us, of course, on these matters of uh, uh, finance uh, uh, and, and ensuring that, of course, countries will get their monies on time. I'm happy that we're starting with him 
promptly. Now, the other problem now on the other side mm. is the issue of um, po it's political. Political in the sense that when a new government comes in place, you find that the if it's a uh, of course it's a new uh, uh, governor now mm. on the seat, so you find that he or she doesn't want in most cases to continue with the projects that have been there that had stall mm. Mm. simply because of course the first or the previous uh, governor already took credit that this is my project so he or she feels that if i continue with this project then it will not be my baby project it will be i would not really own it fully uh the other thing is these issues of probably the contractors uh of course the contractor who's been on site needs to continue with the project. He's the one who's awarded the contract. Mm -hmm. Issues start cropping in. Uh, maybe this contractor was supporting this. So it becomes political, which is unconstitutional and which is unfair. Because who ends up suffering? The Monainchi ends up suffering. Mm -hmm. They end up not getting services as required. We've, we've seen scenarios, and I'm very saddened, but I'm happy the Committee of Health really takes up this much. The issue of even health, mm -hmm. whereby hospitals have, have stalled in terms of their completion, in terms of their equipment that yeah. needs to be equipped. But a building is a shell. And you audit, during audit process, you realize millions of money have been used. Oh, yes. But since, simply because it is Governor XX who, you know, opened this, and even when you look at the... This, There's this a plaque sentence, there that plaque says... There, with somebody it was name. opened by, mm. you know... Governor, so and so, so you find that there is there is delay. You you almost they almost want to start their own new projects, and that's where I mean we 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 are losing. Mm. That's where we are having some of these uh, uh, challenges yeah. that you yeah. see are taking place. Let's so. take a break. We come back and continue this conversation and see. So, what does the law say in all these matters? Mm. What does the law say? And so, why is to what extent are we following the law? And to what extent are we not following the law and why? It's 26 minutes to 8. Our guest is Senator Tabitha Mutinda. She is the vice chairperson of the Finance and Budget Committee of the Senate. We are talking about counties cash crunch. They have threatened to shut down operations. Well, they have threatened this many times before. Many, many. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the National Treasury of Shan now is just get, get used to what my family is. What does it matter? We'll be back shortly. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Ready to